All right, so I'm going to press this bearing out of here. This is from the generator. I need to get that pushed through. Um, I can already see I need to get some press tools, you know, or maybe, I don't know, pieces of steel or something, because uh, that's probably not the right way to go about this right there. There, she moved. And I couldn't get it to move before, and that pushed it off. That's crazy how it pops it, though, isn't it? I wonder why it doesn't slide. Yeah, it's going now, sliding now. Boy, that was... In there tough. As far as I want to go, because I don't want to get that socket stuck in there. <laughs> I want to get something smaller. <laughs> but that made that job easy, didn't it? I couldn't get it. <laughs> and it just pushed it right on through. Very cool. So that's nice. It did exactly what it's supposed to do. I got this smaller socket on there now. But uh, I'll get this pressed the rest of the way off, get this pressed out, and we'll, uh, well, we'll wait for the new ones to come in, I guess. <laughs> So now I can't stop smiling. I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am. I've wanted one of these for so long. And it and it worked just like it's supposed to. I mean, it pushed that thing out. I've had a bearing puller on that thing, which I, I'm sure you'll see in the video. I couldn't get it to even budge. And that thing just pressed right out. Just so amazing. I love when tools work like they're supposed to. Man, why didn't I have one of these years ago? I can't tell you how many times I was with a sledgehammer beating on something with a socket, just smashing the crap out of stuff, trying to get... It pressed out. I mean, honestly, I could have just bought a press for a couple hundred. Of course, I didn't have a couple hundred bucks to spend on it years ago, you know. Um, so, whatever you have, you use what you have. But when you have something new like this that works, you're just like, dag on it. I should have, I could have, should have, would have done. I mean, I mean, it would have saved me a lot of time over the years. But hey, time is something I had. Money is something I didn't. So, glad I have it. Glad I could have it. Anyway, it'll be here. I'm sure it'll be in a lot of future videos. But man, oh man, it's like Christmas around here today. I mean, the fact that I got going and I got it together and then it really worked on something that was so stuck. Just amazing. Just amazing. All right. Let's get back to work. All right. So I spent the morning wiping it down. It won't seem that long to you because I think most of the shots are going to be butt shots, which I'll edit out because <laughs> I'm scrunched up in there. Um, so there's going to be a group of you that said that I can do more. And you're right. I could, say I could spend the rest of my life on there, to be honest with you. And there's going to be a group of you that says you need to prime it first. Uh, very few places am I really down all the way down to the steel. Um, and I have found on my dump truck and my other truck, priming it is almost a waste of time. I do it on my on my little truck sometimes on the dump truck i just roll it on um will the rust come back yeah does the paint fall off never i've never had the rust oleum just peel off or anything like that so i'm not too stressed about primer unless i was just doing all bare steel but uh anyway i mic'd it all down with mineral spirits probably half of you're gonna be like why'd you do that what a waste of time blah 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 but it really isn't and then of course i found some spots that i had missed and got that all taken care of and cleaned up so we are ready for paint you know again could i do more sure i could take all the wires and cables and coolant lines and fuel lines off and get all around the you know get get but get uh paint it all and put them all back in there i'm just not not willing to put that kind of work into this for that so this is going to keep the rust down for a few more years will i have to do again maybe you know, maybe but uh you know, it's easier to get out there and touch a spot here, touch a spot there, than just do a whole whole bunch at one time. I kind of stopped. I had to make a line. I kind of stopped at the wheel well, what I could reach from inside the wheel well. I, I just didn't do past that because I figure if I do one wheel, well, one wheel well, you know, whenever I'm slow, if I got time, get in a wheel well, scrub it down, paint it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I usually do better when I pick, a, pick an area like that to do instead of trying to do the whole thing at once. But 
anyway so you're is there rust in there yeah there's still a little rust in there the, the object is to protect the best scan uh pour 15 again yeah just not a fan haven't had any again it bubbles off it doesn't work for me i know there's gonna be lots of people say do pour 15 and pour 15 basically encases the rust so it can't go on you know you put an inhibitor on it i mean i've used it several times it's i just don't find it worth the expense it just doesn't work for me so anyway rust lm works that's what i found and that's what i'm using professional grade high performance black gloss black so let me get in there let me shut up get in there start painting her up so i don't know what uh i'm gonna have for video or whatever we'll see i mean i'm trying to push this ring around but it's hard when you're painting but uh you know i thought it would go a lot faster than this honestly <laughs> but I, i've basically just got the back side of the underneath over here uh, and so we're just moving our way through i mean honestly you can't go much faster actually i still need to paint that um but you just get move and you move and move and you just find more and more stuff that you didn't get but anyway we're working on this outside frame uh there's a lot under here i don't think the other side's going to be like that because you can't really get back there um anyway so i'm just wiping down and painting and knocking stuff out and painting and whatever so you get more and more as you go but we'll just keep at it i mean it's going along just fine we just got to keep taking our time and just filling in all the little cracks and crannies.
All right, so it is really taking forever uh, to get in all the nooks and crannies. It looks good as it dries. It doesn't look good at first, but then as it dries, it looks pretty decent. I do have a couple drifts, but it's just hard to get in all those little areas. And I'm just shoving in paint where I can't get, you know, I'm just, just trying to protect it the best I can. Anyway, so it's taking a lot longer than I thought it would. I think I'm going to make a tape line there and just paint that so it's a straight tape line. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, you got, you got to get things covered uh, to protect them. So, um, I'm just, and then I get, first I get in all these crooks that you can see, but you can't get your paintbrush in. And so I'm shoving paint in it. And, yeah, you know, I'm not complaining. That's just what it's doing. So I'll just keep going. I'll just keep rolling on and uh, rolling on, brushing on. And uh, <clears throat> we'll just keep doing what we're doing. I mean, I think it's coming out, not decent enough. I started pouring outside, so I'm gonna have to shut this door a little bit, but um, what, a, what a beautiful day, huh? <laughs> hey, I do like seeing the water come out of the back scuppers there on the boat. That's cool, that means the deck's draining perfectly. I like to see that, I like to see that. so that wasn't too terrible that took most of the day i think i've been paying for about five and a half six hours somewhere in there uh we got the uh center all painted out um you know there's all i could could i do more sure but i think this is going to fit the bill for what i need uh someday i'll come back maybe and pull some of this stuff off the firewall and paint the firewall uh but i think this is uh this is good it's uh definitely way better than it was i mean could i do more sure i could do more you could always do more right um i may get some spray paint and try to get up in the cracks up in there where you just can't get with a brush or a roller but other than that i mean it came out really good and we ended up going further over i ended up coming over here and getting this framing and then some framing up underneath this uh just because i was under the front and it made sense right so um yeah anyway I'm going to let this dry. I may, my wife said that the uh, UPS guy dropped off the spacers for the motor. She didn't know what it was, but that's what it is. And uh, for the motor mount. So we'll see if that works. And maybe we'll start putting the brackets back on the motor and putting the motor in the pan so we can figure out where those two front holes go. That would be really good if we get that done. Anyway, we got to let this thing dry. So we're just going to leave it alone. And uh, I may do a little cleanup, but... Uh, We'll probably 
probably won't do too much until it uh, dries up some so I don't mess anything up. But uh, man, I think it looks good. Definitely dresses the bus up. Doesn't look like a rusty bucket of nails anymore. Looks like a high performing machine. <laughs> I end up doing way more than <laughs> painting the steering box and all that stuff. Once you get in there, you're just like, well, you know, you just got to keep going, right? And all that paint will help protect it. So, all right, let me get busy on something else. Oh, yeah, I put a little paint on these stairs too, but I'm going to replace these, I think. There's a new kind of stair out that kind of goes to the ground. Uh, I'm going to look into those and see what that, see what those take to get on here. But anyway, uh, that's future projects. Let's worry about getting the thing running right first. <laughs> And then we'll worry about dressing it up. Yeah. All right. So let me uh, go see what those spacers are, see if they're going to work. Maybe put the engine mounts on the motor. And then uh, maybe we'll set it in here and get those those holes marked. All right. It's time to get these uh, belts on here. It's kind of one of those things I think you got to kind of put it on as you go. As you put it together. I probably got to have these lined up pretty good. Yeah. All right, well, that's too loose. Well, the old one was a 7220 as well. That's interesting. I wonder why it's so loose. Yeah, this is a new 7265. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I had the wrong one. It says it's longer, though. I definitely ain't. Okay, so that's. Tighter. Still not tight, tight though. <laughs> but it is tighter. Still loose, but I guess it'll maybe when it. I don't know. Now I put the belt on. Crank down this though. Let's get the small stuff. Right. I don't remember it being millimeter. Maybe it was. I guess it was. Uh, the neighbors are gonna burn. <laughs> it's a lot better. I have a feeling. Nope, it's perfect. Good. All right. I think I'll put the, the engine mounts on the sides again. All right, it's another day. I'm back in here. And let me show you what I got going on here. These are the specialty bolts that come with them, but they all broke off. Um, and so I got these uh, 3 8 bolts, and then they don't sell these, right? So I kind of recreated it with a with the same 3 8 16 thread it bolts and then put a washer on there and then i got these spacers off amazon to fill the gap because i mean and it kind of comes out like that so i think these are going to work just fine they're grade eight all that stuff but um they'll be our new our new feet bolts <clears throat> anyway had to recreate the wheel those are just so this is the best one out of all of them the rest of them are rusted out but this one's even broke off so but uh, we'll figure out what we actually need. I got different size bolts too, just in case I need something longer or shorter or whatever. So uh, we'll uh, get the feet mounted on this thing and then uh, uh, set it on the tray, I guess, and then bolt the back in and see where the front lies.
didn't seem long enough. I know it's not long enough. That ain't long enough. So I had to get a longer bolt for this one. So they must have broke off pretty good then. All right, let me get another bolt. Hope that's not too long. I may have to put washers on top if that's too long. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's going to be or not, but that gives me that much. Let's see. That doesn't make a difference. And it does. That allows me to go all the way down. Okay. Right there. Make them shorter. I guess I'll mount those other brackets on the side there. Get those mounted up. And then uh, then we can just set it on there. Let's see. It won't be the right height because it'll need the rubber feet underneath. So I guess I'll put the rubber feet underneath first. Alright, so I obviously did this backwards. I'm going to lift this up, mount this plate on the engine, and then set it back down with the rubber things. So right now, it's just pushing it down, and I'm sucking it back out, but I can't get in there very well. So let me uh, pick this up. It's going to pick that, pick it up some. Yeah, let's see. I'll have to undo those plates. So let me undo that plates, and we'll just pick it up and take it off, and then mount the brackets on the engine, and then set it back down. How goofy. Oh, well. You live and you learn, right? So my new thing I gotta figure out is why is that not even close? I mean, I can see where it's rusted, so maybe this goes through the metal to there. To that line kind of goes that goes down in the metal. I thought that's where I took those brackets off, but um man, that doesn't seem right at all. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure this out. Um yeah, that's good. I mean, that's a what half inch, three quarter inch? Difference? So that's definitely not gonna work. Why is this three quarter inch lower than it used to be? That's the question, I guess. Shouldn't be. Engine mounts are in the same place, same engine mounts. I'll measure from here to there and there to there to make sure those are the same size. Maybe they're, maybe those are taller and I just got them both backwards. Not likely, I put them all next to each other. Um, let's see. I can't, I mean, that's down. So if I put it up, that would make this drop even more. So if I went the opposite way. So that's got to be the right place. Man, I don't know. This is crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. All right, well, let me uh, do some figuring here and figure out, I mean, this could, I mean, this could go down in the steel that far and it sticks out through the bottom. That is a possibility. I can't imagine this sticking below this plate, but it is a possibility. What I could do is put the sides back on and kind of bolt this in to see where it goes and see how that fits. All right, so I'm trying to work through this a little bit. We are basically a half inch too low on this. 
And then when I went back and looked through the email, the lady said, when I asked her about engine mounts to begin with, because I was just going to replace them, um, they didn't have them, but she gave me a part number. And the part number then is an inch and three quarter. And these ones that are on here on the front are an inch and a quarter. So that would lift it up quite a bit, actually. Um, so I'm thinking maybe that's what's wrong with this. Now the question is, no, I need to, do I need to lift it up in the front and the back or just the, um, or just the front? Um, I guess I could put a level on this and kind of see if it's tilting forward. It looks like it is a little bit. Um, I could also get washers, big flat washers, and put them underneath this mount. That would serve the same purpose. Um, so I don't know, half inch probably, you could probably get them in, I don't know how big they make the washers, but I know they make good size ones. So I could stack a couple or a few of those underneath there. All right, good afternoon. It's Monday afternoon. I've been in inside editing a video for you guys. Um, so what I end up doing is getting these big washers uh, and stacking them up underneath there. I will have to weld those together and weld them to the plate so that they're not vibrating all around. But uh, it took five of the washers to stack it to the right height so that it would be in the center. And it still could go higher, but I think that's gonna be fine right there. It was de definitely rubbing on this bottom piece, which is, explains why they had the rubber tucked up underneath it. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they figured out. I think these are the wrong size. I do have bigger ones on a quote request, but I haven't heard anything back and I have the suspicion I'm not going to hear anything back. They want you to order, the companies that sell these, they want you to order like a thousand at a time. Well, I don't need a thousand. Um, I need two. <laughs> and I think that's probably what he ran into and he ended up somehow finding these, which are just for the rears. And he put them on the front. And then I think he stacked rubber pieces up underneath there, but since it was so worn out, um, I think that that's, uh, uh, I'm talking about the, the bottom plate was so worn out. I think the rubber just pushed through um because it was sitting on this and uh it was then it, <clears throat> it was grinding on the bottom of this plate and this plate was probably holding the motor up which is terribly sad all right so that's where we're at it's about 30 minute mark so i'm gonna leave it there um what a mess huh i mean it just seems like it's one thing after another but we'll get it figured out we always do hey thanks so much for spending your time with me and i'll see you guys next week don't forget if you haven't already like and subscribe see you next week